So forgive me for being American, for hating podiums, and for having very stale jokes. It's all I got. So, uh, right. So the topic Jason and I were talking, and he had asked me to put together some material for to address this level of security. How much is enough? Um, and I get paid for that. I am a director of a company called Risk Factory. We just set up an e-commerce um, uh, website for online for SMEs. But you know, at the end of the day, that's it to help people with this. How much is enough? How long is a piece of string? How much security do I need? Uh, and that's technically what we're doing. There's no kit. It's just common sense. And so the, the presentation, the material I have for you is that. I go into companies and they say, Rich, you know enlighten me and uh, um, tell me, how, how do I get there? How do I get this message to my people? How do I protect what's important to me? Uh, and I walk them through a very, very simple set of common sense uh, ideas. And that's what this is, um, technically. So if you'll forgive the, the strange um, Zen-like uh, approach, but I found that the, 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 the topic really just fit this, this area for me very, very easily. And it's, I want to start out and I want to tell you a story. Story is a Zen master and a CIA working for a company, okay? And the board calls in, uh, calls him in and says, all right, here's the thing. Uh, we do not want hackers getting in and getting access to our sensitive data. So they walk out and the CIO goes, okay, I've got a firewall, but you know, I'm going to upgrade that firewall uh, to do some content managing. So he goes out and he buys a state-of-the-art firewall, okay? Brings it back in puts it in, tells the board, that the board says, oh, that's wonderful. Now hackers can't get access to our sensitive detail data. And then the Zen master says, we'll see. Two days later, the state-of-the-art firewall gets knocked over by a denial of service attack. And the company goes, oh, how horrible. Now, now hackers are going to get access to our sensitive data. And the Zen master says, we'll see. So the CIO runs out and he buys a brand new IDS, IPS, puts that in, uh, spends a lot of money, uh, comes in, uh, and the board tells the board, and they go, okay, that's great, how wonderful. Now, uh, now hackers can't get in and get access to our sensitive data. And the Zen master says, we'll see. What happens two or three days later, somebody opens up an email, it's got, it opens up an executable file, then the system gets uh, uh, thwarted by a a botnet, and the board says, oh, how horrible. Now they're going to get access to our sensitive data. And the Zen master says, okay, I can spend like five hours doing that. <laughs> and that, that right there is actually what I get paid for, right there in a nutshell. And I give people invoices to go in and be a Zen master and talk to them about this level of security. And I want to start out with everybody starts out. My mom said, always do a PowerPoint. Son, she took me aside when she gave me a PowerPoint lesson. She says, always start with an interesting statistic. And for me, I just, we can't get around this. Everybody you talk to says, oh, it's, it's a jungle out there. Uh, cyber crime is the fastest growing crime on the planet. But I want to talk about why, okay? There's three reasons. One, hard to detect. Two, hard to prevent. Anybody here ever consider a life in crime? Come on, be, come with me. I sat on right on the Nexus when I was 16 years old and thought I could be a master criminal, but I couldn't do time. So I started, got into what I do now. Um, but that's another presentation. Hard to detect, hard to prevent. That's the kind of crime you're looking for, right? I, Agatha Christie told us that. Every crime novel I ever read is all about the hard to detect, the hard to prevent. Okay, and this guy is my hero. Anybody in security, anybody in crime uh, fighting days, looks at this guy, and I, pardon the Americanism, but this guy's a guy named Willie Sutton. Anybody know who Willie Sutton is? Yeah, it's pro largely because he looks like this. Willie Sutton in the 40s and 50s was, he headed the FBI's all-time, uh, um, what do they call this, the most wanted list, all right? He was the longest guy in the most wanted list. And, uh, and they could never catch him, largely because he looked like this. What did Willie Sutton do? He robbed banks. Okay, most prolific bank robber the U.S. has ever seen. Not Babyface Nelson or John Dillinger, all these guys who had Hollywood movies. This guy was the most successful bank robber, according to the FBI. Okay, so he went for years and didn't get caught. You know what he did during the day? Worked at banks. Went from town to town, worked for banks. Okay, when they finally caught him, which is the moral of the story, and they put a microphone in front of him and say, Willie, why do you rob banks? He said, that's where the money is. 
Okay, cybercrime, make this point to understand. Hard to detect, hard to prevent, that's where the money is. What kind of money? Easy money. Again, I apologize for the stateside statistics, but these are neat. You know, and everybody's got a gun in the states. We, we, we're issued them in high school now. But if you take a, take a gun, walk into the bank, and you're going to get it, walk out. That's armed robbery. You're going to walk out with about $1,800 US. 27, 28 pounds, UK? Yeah? <laughs> That's uh, funny. Yeah, OK. All right. You know, you know what you're going to do? You get caught? 20 years to life. Felony. Armed robbery, felony, 20 years to life. You're running down the street with 1,800 pounds, $1,800. 1,800 pounds might be worth it. Average cybercrime right now in the U.S., you take a computer, you rob that bank, you're, the average you're going to get is about 750, about three quarters of a million. That's almost 1,000 pounds. See how I do that? Well, if one joke works, I'll just, I'll just recycle it. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what the time you're going to do for that first offense? 18 months. 18 months for three quarters of a million dollars. Okay? Who in their right mind would take a gun and rob a bank? Hard to detect, hard to prevent. That's where the money is. Okay? That's where the money is. Okay. Did I beat that to death? Because that's what I tend to do. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Did anybody see anybody get caught for, oh, I don't know, uh, Home Depot? Uh, the Target hack? The J.P. Morgan hack? Anybody see anybody go to jail for that? Yeah, funny that, huh? Big money. Okay, last year, Wired Magazine said there's about 6 million web pages offering a point-and-click. What Jason's up here showing you, point-and-click attacks, those things come prepackaged on the web. About 6 million free pages, and that's on the open web, not the dark web. The January this year, they also said, you know, every month about half a billion attacks are made. And if you think you haven't been hit, you're just not, you're just not looking. It's like a tree that fell in the forest, doesn't make a sound to you. Okay, so here's the problem. Here's two problems. Here's the first problem. You and I just do not get that data equals cash. Who was it a couple of years ago that said, you know, data is the information of our economy age? Data equals cash. It's not just credit cards, but we're up here talking about Internet of Things. Data is big money to anybody. It doesn't matter if it's my blood pressure, my cholesterol, where I buy my shampoo. Somebody makes money from that. It's name and address. Is yeah, fine. But we are, you know, the, we have to understand that all data equals cash. Mark my words, in five years, your companies will have data listed on their P&L. Data equals cash. Now, once we got that in our minds, I tell you, if I grabbed your wallet and ran out of here, uh, you'd tackle me. But if I grabbed, you know, your driver's license and ran out of here, you'd probably run for about 50 meters. Ah, good luck with that. I'll just get another one. Data equals cat. We don't look at it like that. We do not look at a data set, regardless of what it is, and think that's valuable to somebody. Whether it's my competitors or it's, it's credit card information, it's intellectual property, somebody can make money off that. Because a lot of people are making a lot of money off a lot of data. All right, so that's my first problem. We don't get that. We don't understand that all of the data that we process as a company is valuable to someone. Second problem is the obvious problem, okay? It's this. It's you and I are just lost in a, delu a deluge. A deluge? That's, that's uh, a deluge. Let's go with that. Every day we wake up and there's a new threat. You know, as a threat from day to day, from month to month, from, oh, one day, we're, one year, worried about insiders, the next word, you know, we're worried about botnets, then Trojans, then Smurfing, then spyware, then spam, then adware, then eavesdropping, and script kitties, and database theft, and data mining, and SQL injections, and cross-site SQL injections, and oh my God. I do this for a living, I can't keep up with it. I run an information security company, I cannot keep up with it. Every day, there are more and more threats out there. And you and I become anesthetized to that because you just, your mind can't get around it. You cannot fathom. Anybody here know what a, 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 a stealth bomb is? 
Anybody here know what, we all know what phishing or spyware is. How about a road apple? That's cute. That's a, just a, 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 a thumbnail drive with spyware on it They're called road apples. The trick is if I wanted to social engineer, I'd throw a bunch under the seats here and you guys would, oh, hey, look, put this in your pocket, go back to your companies and plug them in. That's a road apple. Who can keep up with this? I'm telling you, I can't keep up with that. A large has to do with my attention span. It's very low. But seriously. Okay, so, a, one, data equals cash. Two, threats, lots, lots and lots and lots. Okay, so this results in this huge apathy. This huge, we, we look at this and, and, our, and we go like, it, it, it just overwhelms us. I don't care if you do this for a living or you run a company that collects data or you work for that company in charge of, of collecting, of securing that data. If you punched in, you know, your digital security soul, it looks like that. It took me a long time to make that, by the way. We're just in the dark. We are so overwhelmed, we do little or nothing. Jason stands up here, Andrew stands up here and says, year after year after year, look at Heartbleed still works a year later. Why? Because we're just, we're like a deer in the headlights. We're overwhelmed. Okay, so where do you start? I know where I start when I'm overwhelmed. The French have a great saying, so it's just call me vous. I love the French. <laughs> call me vous. Okay, so this is, what, this is what a hacker will do. When a hacker can't get in your system, this comes from the hacker dictionary. And I love this because, listen, this is your adversary telling you when he can't get into your system, <sighs> takes a break, break, orders another pizza, pop opens another Red Bull, plays some Warcraft for a couple hours, and he zens it. What does that mean? He forgets about it and lets his subconscious mind work on it and, son, oh, I zend it. How did I get into that network? I zend. I had a problem at first, but I overcame it because I zend it. I like that. I like that because then I don't see us using it as defenders. I, you know, we are just we're buying kit. We're put writing policies. We're doing all this. We think that activity has to account for you know is going to be the best defense. So I'm saying, here's an idea. Relax. Just relax. Take a breath. Take a breath and find out how this works. You gotta love the, the support here, huh? Relax, okay? Ask yourself, go to that special place. Hold on, hold on. Go to that special place you gotta go to get in touch with your inner whatever. Light your aromatherapy candles. Listen to your music, okay? Send to yourself, and I want you to ask yourself these three questions. What am I trying to protect? What is it that I need to protect? Why do I have to protect it? And what's going to happen to me if I fail? Why, what am I trying to protect? What data? What is it? Is it credit card data? Is it intellectual property data? What is it that if you lost it, it would do you harm? My jokes. I try to protect those because you know, I hear them at so many conferences, I think I should have held on to that. Somebody should have credited me that. What is it you're trying to protect? Why do you have to protect it? Because you should, because you have to, because of regulation? Why, can you answer these three questions? Has anybody thought of it in this simple language? Looked at their company and said, what is it we're trying to protect? Why are we trying to protect it? And what's gonna to happen to us if we fail? Because if you did that, if you, you know, if you listened to you, got up, left your little private space and wrote the answers down, they would make all the difference in the world on your journey when you're sitting in meetings trying to figure out what do we have to do? Because you've already thought, well, what are we trying to protect? Credit card detail, uh, personal sensitive detail, medical records, uh, uh, intellectual property. You've got a handle on that. Why are we trying to protect it? because we have to by regulation, because uh, uh, our customers expect it. Write these things down. Without it written down, you will always be chasing it. And it will change from year to year. 
Once you do that, once you, once you meditate and find the answers to what am I trying to protect? Why am I trying to protect it? What's going to happen to me if I fail? Then you'll start to get these design, these, these, you know, uh, you'll, you'll start to take that further and contemplate. And always, always start with this simple, simple exercise. If it were up to you, what would you do? If it were your data, we, we often, we, here, here's our biggest problem. We just can't get our minds around that. It's not ones and zeros. This is data associated with people's lives in their medical records. This is somebody's nan, somebody's grandpa. This is somebody's credit card, you know, somebody's daughter who's going to university, somebody's son. These are people's lives. What if it was your data? What if it was your specific data? What would you expect of your company? I, you know, I, I look at CIO and this first, or CEO, and that's the first question I have is, is your data in this database? <laughs> no, no. That's, that's nuts. How would you, how would you expect you to gonna, you're gonna achieve any level of security if you don't turn it around and find that answer right there? You're absolutely right to start all questions with, if it were mine, I'd expect this to happen. I'd expect it to be encrypted in, in storage or encrypted over the web, or I would expect you're not gonna lose it. I would expect that you don't share it with other people. Privacy, as we talked about in this panel, and is, it's, a personal ex it's a personal idea. But until you extend that out into your company, you never, really, you never really understand what you're trying to achieve. Okay, once you do that, the rest of these sudden things will start to flow. Okay, what do I expect? What does my board expect? Well, they don't want to be in the paper. They, they don't want their share uh, price to go uh, down. Uh, what do my clients expect? Well, <laughs> obviously, you know, that's you. That's what I'm saying. You're, you're going to find out you are so incredibly, if you start to look at it, if this were my data, I'd do this. Suddenly, these answers, you know, in terms of what other companies are doing, what are best practices, what do they have to do by law, come to you just like that. Any questions? Let me stop and say, raise your hand if you've ever done this. Raise your hand if you hate raising your hands at these conferences. Come on. Exactly. It's that simple. You do your meditation, you get your contemplation, you start to turn this around. You start to define your experience, your definition of security. Okay, these divine, these will, your meditation will lead into, uh, uh, contemplation will lead into these divine thoughts. First of all, okay, I know what I'm trying to protect. I know why I'm trying to protect it. Then, you know, I know what I expect. I know what the board expects. Here's the question. Where is it? Where is it? Is it in email servers? Is it on mobile devices? Where is it on your network? And I get paid a lot of money to go from that last slide to this slide. Where? No. Okay. All right. You've got it. Now, where is it? Uh, it's all over. Really? Is that the best idea? And that's how I feel about people coming in late, and I think we should, <laughs> I think we should leave it there. Um, okay, so where's the data I need to protect? What, and then you go into, all right, so fun, suddenly when you got that, it's crystal clear. Then what are the threats to this data, and what's the uh, probability associated with those threats? Suddenly you're on, you're on a whole new level of enlightenment. You're starting to see the light. All right, you've answered it from a personal, you've looked within, you've looked at your immediate environment, and now you start to look, with, you look across the network, identify where it is. And then you're gonna get specific and say, what are the threats to this data and what are the probabilities associated with those threats? And of course, God love Google. They'll give you about a million and a half ideas to, to help you. Compasses to help you on your journey to enlightenment. Type in threat assessment risk, or risk tools, free. Now put in the word free there. And last total, I, I don't even know how many I got. A lot, thousands, hundreds of thousands. Excel spreadsheets, any, anything. But technically, all the tools are based on a very, very simple risk equals threat times probability times impact. Everybody here know that? Apparently, according to Welsh, uh, some restrictions, I can't show you my tattoo. But if I could, it would say risk equals threat times probability times impact. You look at your data. You look at your data, you've located uh, and documented where your data is. This, these are my information assets. These are the, this is the information that if I lost it would do me harm. Okay, I, you identify the threats to the, that asset. You quantify the threats uh, uh, occurring. You calculate the impact on your business and then you put in the controls. That, 
those five steps right there define how much is enough. When you, if you're struggling with this, how long is a piece of string? What, what is the appropriate level of security? It's in these five steps. Locate and document what you have to protect. Identify the threats. Quantify the probability. And calculate it if you lost it. And suddenly everything becomes crystal clear. I've done this. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> Thank you. I had to ask for it, but thanks anyway. For, okay, everybody see this. It's not, it, it, you know, how long, you know, so for some companies, this is huge. For other companies, for a mom and pop dot co dot UK, this could take an hour. For IBM or Microsoft, this could take years and years and years and years. But that's it, it's that simple that you can't get to this place, you can't get to that, that five steps until you've done your meditation, your contemplation, and have your, div your divine thoughts. But once you have, you show up to those five steps and they just move like this. And you're gonna get lots of free tools to, to get you there. Information assets, you need to, that's key that you understand what those, is, what those are. And these are these, you know, I, I always, always define them as, you know, if you lost them, they cause you harm. So what is that? Is that a, 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 a CRM database? Is that your intellectual property? But there's tangible and intangible. Of course, any, everybody can get their head around tangible, but this is the hard one to come to terms with. And this is the one the media makes you come to terms with. If you're JP Morgan or Home Depot, the, the, the CEO of Home Depot retired. That's an amazing thing. That's how big that breach was. That's an amazing thing. Uh, in, in his wildest dreams, I'm sure he was, wasn't sitting around thinking, oh, we lose a few credit cards, I'm out of a job. I don't know, for those of you who don't know Home Detail or Target, these are huge stores. Target's a great place to get cotton white socks, by the way. This is a real thick, heavy kind. They're dirt cheap. Okay, tangible, intangible assets. You're, you know, you're not going to understand what intangible is until, until it's gone. But threats come in three flavors, a natural threat, an accidental, and an intentional. Natural, flood, fire, famine, locusts. locusts. Uh, accidental, you invite me over, I trip over the cord, pull out your, your, you know, your website goes down. And intentional, two sources, internal, external. Intentional, malicious uh, uh, threats. Okay, probability, very, very easy. You can set up anything from, you know, it doesn't exist to it's extremely high probability. You can put, you can, def you can define this for your own. Uh, um, the, what's the probability that Rich will come into this office and trip over my, uh, uh, my plug and bring out my website? Well, it's, it's, it's negligible, it's unlikely to occur because I'm never gonna invite him to my, to, to, uh, my company. Probability, again, you set up anything, scale one to five, scale to one to three, scale one to 10, doesn't matter, but you can design something very easy to put your arms around this. Um, the impact, same thing, uh, a scale of one to whatever. The definition of, you know, okay, if this system went down, if this system were breach, what harm, little harm, no harm, a lot of harm, I'd be out of business. Do you know that? A lot of people start off on business continuity and disaster recovery, trying to put a number to this. Uh, if the website went down, how much money would we lose in 10 minutes, half hour, 15 minutes, five days? How much pain is too much pain? Okay, uh, uh, controls, so you got, uh, 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 they've come in just through, you know, the idea here is there's three, there's four levels of controls. You can write a policy, you can put uh, 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 personnel on it, so a guard, you can put a procedure behind it, or it comes in a piece of kit, the hardware or software security control that you put on. Okay, um, so, but it looks like this. You list an asset up here. You say, okay, my database is an asset. The threat is malware. The probability is high because we do a lot of uh, direct internet connections. The impact would be, uh, or the probability on a scale of one to six is medium. The impact would be high. It's a medium risk to me. Here's what I'm gonna do to put control. I'm gonna put anti-malware on it. That is your map of how much is enough. Without this, you're being led by a vendor to buy something or not. Okay, it's that here's, you know, to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Uh, you know, to a, to a firewall vendor, everything looks like a firewall problem uh, that he can provide a solution to. But this is your map. This is customized. 
One size does not fit all. You, 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 you take something that's as easy to do like this in a, in a spreadsheet, work it out, and you actually have the profile of how much security is appropriate for your company. I'm not going to ask an amen. This just isn't the crowd to get, a, get an amen from. And you don't know that until you learn the hard way. I love this. This is, the, you know, my mind gets around visuals, you know, but every single risk, what's the likelihood of it happening? What's the impact on me? You work out something like this. What's the likelihood uh, that, you know, what's the risk of, uh, of, of Richard to my attention span? Well, you know, the I'm, I'm, uh, likelihood, uh, he hasn't said anything so far, uh, but the impact, you know, I'm, I'm here because I'm interested in security. Yeah, he's minimal concern. He's a minimal threat to my attention span. Every single threat you have can be worked out, something simple like that. And then, of course, you look at the red box and you do everything there first. You look at the, uh, the, you know, the moderate concern, you do that next. And it's how do you prioritize your threats and how you prioritize your roadmap for remediation. I know I get paid for this, too. You gotta love that. It's so simple. Okay. Um, Options, I want to just make these, you only have, when it comes to threats, you only have four things you can do. You can accept it, you can avoid it, you can reduce it, you can transfer it. Risks, you can accept risks, you can avoid them, you can reduce them, you can transfer them. Well, you took that pretty easy. Okay, you do this and the next thing you're gonna to start to struggle with is bad karma. What's bad karma? Money. Cash, okay, bad karma is, is how much will this hurt our business? You're gonna understand your loss time, your repair time, financial loss, all the way to your legal costs. And suddenly you'll see how important this database set is or that those medical records are or these credit cards are. Everything is lined up according to how much cash you could lose and you'll, you'll get your board's attention very quickly about what needs to be protected. Okay, um, I know this, I, I saw the crowd, there's a lot of uh, dev app guys in here, a lot of, you know, if you're code writing, just forgive me. Uh, Americans simplify, it's in our DNA. Um, so I apologize for this, but um, um, I find that every single you know, technical conversation I have revolves around 10 principles of hacking. Okay, the first one is if a bad guy can run his program on your network, it's not your network anymore. I don't care how technical or not technical you are, and if you're very technical, you may disagree, but you'll pull up something. But listen to what I'm saying. If I can run a program on your network, I own your network. If I'm a hacker, that's my objective. I just need to run a program. And I don't care what your technical level of capability is, you sit in a meeting and you raise your hand and say, I'm sorry, will somebody be able to run a program on that network? Well, you know, and this will tell you very quickly what the security risk is, because this is what a hacker thinks like, okay? A hacker thinks like if he can upload programs to your website, it's not your website anymore. If he can access dat a data on your network, it's not your data anymore, it's his. He'll modify it, he'll, 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 he'll delete it, uh, he'll do what he wants. This is ownership thought. This is the way he looks, he or she he looks at your data. Okay, if he can make changes to your applications, uh, you know, uh, and get on your devices, not your applications, not your devices, you're just renting them. Well, you're not. Okay, uh, and uh, this one I love, if a, a bad guy can use your network to launch an attack on another network, it's your problem. Uh, you do know that. Um, if he can access your partner's network from your network, it's your problem. Uh, all the way down to, you know, hey, he's faster than you, he's smarter than you, this is what he's doing all day. Uh, and he always knows where you, where you hide, hide your spare keys. And that certainly now includes vendors who have been, whether it's the RSA code that, oh, geez, not as secure as we thought it was, or all the other vendors that are being pu pulled out in APT lights, uh, we trusted these. But they're always faster and they're always smarter. Um, okay, those are the 10 rules of hacking and those really help uh, conceptually. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to this, okay? Focusing you to use three words in everything you do. You come to a security problem, how much is too much, and your job is to identify, minimize, manage the threat. I have another tattoo, and this one I just might show you to wake up this audience. And it's not a threat, that's, 
Identify, minimize, manage. That's what your job is. Identify the, the, you, know, you identify the threats to the data, you minimize those threats, and you manage them going forward. That's what an enlightened person does in my profession. Can I show him the tattoo? <laughs> okay, I promised you enlightenment. We're almost there. One more thing I need to tell you. So you can obviously tell with my head I've been in some therapy. I have. And a long time ago, some, my therapist gave me a book about people searching for truth. And it was based on a Zen saying. It's called, if you meet the Buddha on the road. So if you meet the Buddha on the road, this is for somebody. If you're out there on a pilgrimage and you're searching for truth, okay, you're looking for absolutes in the world of information security or in any other world. This is what I love to think about. If you meet the Buddha on the road, there's only one thing you do. You kill him. If you meet the Buddha on the road, you kill him. If you come to anybody who can promise you, they'll secure your network. He's a false Buddha. You kill him. If you meet anybody who promises you'll find enlightenment or truth outside of the guy in front of you on the, on the podium, you kill him, okay? Because the nature, the nature is very, very simple. Here, enlightenment is understanding computer security is an oxymoron. It used to be, I used to, I used to say, you know, computer security is an oxymoron. The only secure computer is the one in the box. You take it out of the box from the high street vendor, you open it up, you plug it in, and the game begins. What's the game? Identify, minimize, manage. That stopped last year on August when I read a, uh, when I read a news clipping from uh, that China was infecting uh, uh, PCs right from the, from the line. And by the time you booted it up, it was already compromised. Wow. Okay, so that's it. That's what I had for you. Are you feeling enlightened? We'll see, yeah. See how I brought that around? Thanks very much. <laughs>